The Bible says he's long, the word long suffering, the macro word is macrothea, macrothumia, macrothumia is long suffering. God is long suffering. Okay, baby, you missed that. You didn't learn that lesson. Bless your soul. Take it again. <laughs> Five years later. You ain't learned that lesson yet. Bless your soul. Take it again. I don't know why. I dated seven guys. All seven of them are just a bunch of doggish jerks. I, they are cow. Have you learned anything? I'm starting to do it next week. Have you learned anything yet? I learned. I don't like pain. That's good. But have you learned anything yet? Because if you've not learned better, you can't do no better. There's a lesson to be learned. And the problem is that God is trying to develop you and grow you. If you find yourself, I'm in a cycle. I don't know why. I feel like I'm on an air go round. I've been this way before. And I've been there a thousand times. But it's, so someone has said that insanity, insanity is doing the same thing, the same way, expecting different results. There is gain to your pain. If you understand that every good gift and every perfect gift, let me preach it, every, every beneficial gift that changes you for what's better, every perfect gift that's maturing gift, gifts that make you where God, maturing is growing to where God wants you to be at. Sometimes it takes pain to help you mature. Y'all all get that? Who, who in here has not beat their kids? <laughs> you gonna stop acting silly, or else you're gonna have some pain. You use pain to get their attention, pain to help them mature. Pain helps you to grow up. And if you want to grow up, understand God said, but He's a professional. He knows how to allow you to get just what you need to get just what He wants you to be. But he will send a thorn. If you're wise, what you do is you will quickly surrender. Sometimes you watch these movies and somebody got somebody, you know, we're going to torture you. They beat them. They beat me. They beat them. They cut them. And they finally get to a little, ah, I'll tell everything. <laughs> you should have said that the first time. <laughs> you told it anyway. It's not an issue of are you going to learn to surrender. Maybe more of a question, how much pain you got to go through before you say I'm through? How long are you going to fight before you say I'm not going to win this battle? How many tears you got to cry before you're tired of crying tears and start realizing you ain't got no control? When you will come to the point that you begin to understand you control absolutely nothing in life. And you will always be at your best when you realize you just ride with somebody else. But God will allow you to go through stuff for the sake of making you better and stronger, like you said to Peter. But when you are converted, when you are changed, when this happens to you, when it gets you to where you need to be at, reach out there and strengthen somebody else. Because I ain't letting you go through this, Peter, for your own benefit. I'm going to drag you through it and make you better. But I ain't trying to make you better to stick your chest out and say you somebody. I'm going to make you better so you can serve somebody else. It ain't never really been about you. It's about you in the sense of being saved and add family to God. But once that has happened, then God wants to do his maturing or perfecting work on you, which is going to cause some pain. But when he's finished with you, you will be a masterpiece ready for heaven. <laughs> I don't know what your, what your headache has been. I don't know what your thorn is. It could be your body. It could be your mindset. It could be folks in your life. It could be your faith. It could, I don't know what your, what, your, what, your, what your thorn is. I know God will give it to you for a purpose. And if you want God to do what he says he'll do, understand this. As we said earlier, the devil has got free access to you if you're not in Christ. 
you have to be a plum fool to know you lost and let the devil, devil beat up on you. At least if you're in the family of God, if you're going through something, God is using it to develop you. And he's, he's taking all that stuff and using it for something else. But if you're not even a Christian, friend, what do you call yourself doing? Why would you play around with something as precious as your soul? Do you not know that you ain't got but one life to live? And any life without God directing your path, it's all messed up anyway. You gotta, but what you need to do is what the Bible says to do. I'm going to tell you what t- what's required to be saved. Being saved is being in a relationship with God where he can save you. Friend, and that's what's required. Uh, you, you would actually need help to misread your Bible. You couldn't misread on your own. Somebody had to sit down with you and make you read something wrong. It's so clear you would need help to misread it. Here's what the Bible says. Here's what the Bible says you must do to be saved. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes from hearing, from hearing the word of God. It says that you acquire saving faith from hearing God's word. Then the Bible says, Hebrews 11, chapter, verse number 6, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that rewards those who diligently seek him. You must come to the Lord with a diligent search. Or well, a diligent search is the idea, not looking on the streets of Indianapolis for the different churches. I like that program. They got a nice preacher. I saw that building is beautiful. They, they, you search diligently inside the Bible, not inside the, the city, the final church. And then the Bible is so clear, it says this, that uh, at one time, God overlooked ignorance, Acts 17, verse 30. At one time, God overlooked ignorance, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is a change of mind. It says no to sin and yes to God. Repentance is saying no to my way and yes to God's way. And if you have a repentant mindset, a mindset where you're ready to change, surrender, surrender it all to Jesus, give it my, you don't know what I'm going through. It ain't yours to carry. You ain't going to fix nothing. Surrender to the Lord's power and control. And then the Bible says, Matthew 10, 32, Wherefore, whosoever shall confess before men, him will also confess before my Father which is in heaven. You must stand by this audience and declare on this morning your belief that Jesus is the Christ and he's the Son of the living God. And upon that confession, we'll take your hand because the Bible is still right. Mark 16, 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Believe and be baptized. And is a conjunction. Conjunction, conjunction. What's your function? The function of a conjunction is to join two ideas together that you can't separate them from each other. If you ain't got to be baptized, you ain't got to believe. I was baptized. I was baptized as a baby. Or, or I was God. But I went to the church and prayed. I came forth and they laid hands on me, prayed on me. We did a dance and everything else. And they baptized me a week later. He's still lost. Because the Bible is clear that you must be baptized with an understanding that you're doing it for the forgiveness of your sins. Acts chapter 2, verse number 37, the Bible says that they, Peter was preaching a sermon. They said, men and brothers, what should we do? Peter said, verse 38, verse 38 of Acts 2, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission and removal of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You die, you're buried through baptism, and you rise to walk in a brand new life. That's the Bible's plan. Why? Because the only, one, the only one place where salvation is found is a place called in Christ. Well. In. If you ain't in Christ, you lost. Because when God comes back and he looks at you, he doesn't, if he sees you, he'll see your sin. You don't want God seeing you. you got to be in the one place where he won't see you. you got to be inside of Christ. How do you get inside of Christ? Well, the Bible is clear. In Romans 6, it talks about Galatians 3. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, the term into Christ is used to emphasize the idea of being baptized into. The Bible never says pray into Christ. It doesn't say jump into Christ, roll into Christ, holler, be shouting into Christ. It says be baptized into Christ. And if you're baptized into Christ, once you get inside of Christ, when God sees you, he does not see you. The problem with mankind is that God loved man, and when man sinned, God saw who he loved and saw what he hated, man sinned. It's called the mystery or the mystery of all scripture. What's the mystery? The mystery is how is God going to save man when every time he sees the man he loves, he sees what he hates. He creates a place called in Christ. You get in Christ, and when God sees you, he doesn't see you. You're in Christ. And there's only one way to do it. That's the way the Bible says do it. <coughs> you have to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And then he'll add you, Acts 2 47 says, and he will add you to his church. Ain't no other way. 
and you can do anything else you want to do, you can't back it up with scripture. Well, brother, Hubbard, all the churches on TV say, say the sinner's prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Savior. That sounds so pretty. I just can't find it. And if it's not in here, where'd it come from? If it didn't come from God, it can't help you. My pastor told me, I believe my pastor. Well, pastor got a heaven for you in good shape. But the Bible says that, that Jesus is the author of eternal salvation in Hebrews. And if you're going to be saved, you've got to do it his way. Amen. And when you do that, the Bible says you can't even join God's church. Amen. I joined the church last year. Well, bless your soul. You can't join this one. Yes, sir. See, because if you could join it, we could say, now nah, we don't like you. Baby, man, I don't like you. You, you could too, you wave your hand and stuff like that. You don't fit with us. You got to get up out of here. <laughs> it ain't mine. God adds you to his church. Yes, Acts 247. He will add you in. And when you add it to the family of God, you are family. Yes, sir. Yes. I, I gotta love you, you gotta love me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's God's plan. Yes. If you're not a Christian, Lord knows, ain't anybody here lost. You got a question mark, don't walk out with a question mark in your mind. We well, anybody got all we're gonna do is just let you read the Bible for yourself. We will not misguide you or tell you what we think. Anybody got time for that? <laughs> We're going to try to show you what you can actually read for yourself out of the Word of God. And if you seek your truth, you'll find it this morning. You're not a Christian, I invite you to come. Let God bless you, make you better and stronger for the purpose He has you here. But if you're not a part of the family of God, I invite you to come. If you're a Christian and unless somehow you got a thought in your flesh, that thing is hurting you so bad, you don't know what to do, just admit the reality. God has allowed it for the purpose of helping to mold you. Thank him. Paul said, I praise God. Because I understand now, I thought that thorn was going to limit me. God identified you need that. If you trust in your father and he says you need it, you trust him. I don't know what your Bible is, where your difficulties are. I know he's brought you for a reason. And I do know that's a coincidence. And whatever you comprehend that you need to do, that's what you must do right now as you stand and sing. I invite you to come. Won't you come? There's not